So let's summarize Unit 8. The topic of Unit 8 was Strange Attractors. And I introduced Strange Attractors through several examples. The first example was the Henon map. This is a discrete two-dimensional mapping. There are two variables, x and y, and they jump forward in time from time 1 to 2 to 3 by just applying this rule. This says that the next x and y value is a function of the current x and y values. And then there are these two parameters, a and b. And we observe chaotic behavior for some parameter values. Here's one of those chaotic parameter values. This was the standard one that Enon discovered. And um, this so shows uh, aperiodic behavior, sensitive dependence on initial conditions. But what's new in this chapter is plotting x against y, plotting it in an xy plane, we see a complicated and structured attractor. And we used some software to zoom in on this and we saw that it had a fractal structure that um, every time you think you see one line, it's actually made up of two lines. And this, there's bends within bends within bends here in this shape. So it's a complicated, highly ordered and structured attractor. It looks um, very different than the disordered, irregular, aperiodic behavior one sees here. So uh, this is a strange attractor. So what is a strange attractor? Well, it's two things. It's an attractor. Um, and remember, that means that nearby orbits get pulled into it. It's stable. If you're on the attractor and you get bumped off a bit, you get pulled back into the attractor. However, for strange attractors, motion on the attractor is chaotic. And that means that orbits are aperiodic and have sensitive dependence on initial conditions. So it is an attractor that is itself chaotic, an attracting chaotic orbit. So that was a Henon map. And then we did another example, the Lorenz equations. This is a system of three differential equations. It's a dynamical system. It's a rule for telling us how x, y, and z depends on time, how, it, how they change over time. And the rule here is specified in terms of derivatives, rates of change. And there are three parameters in Greek now, sigma, rho, and beta. And if we fix those at a particular value, we can solve for x, y, and z using a computer. And here uh, is one example of doing that. We see aperiodic cycling in all three variables. There's some um, sort of time regularity, but the amplitude of these wiggles and whether or not they're up or down vary um, seemingly at random. So um, again, we can plot now x, y, and z against each other. So plot this trajectory in a three-dimensional phase space. And if we do that, we get the Lorenz attractor. And this orbit um, lies on a strange attractor. And similar to the Henan attractor, it's a strange attractor because it's attracting and because motion on the attractor itself um, has sensitive dependence on initial conditions, the butterfly effect. Again, a reminder that since this is a deterministic system, lines in phase space, phase space can't cross. It looks like they do, but that's because one is going over the other. So then in order to talk about this idea of stretching and folding, I introduce one more um, dynamical system, which is maybe a little less well known, but um, is one of my favorite ones and that's the um, Russler equations. So like the Lorenz equations, these are a system of three differential equations. And sorry, I just realized now that this dt got um, cropped just a little bit. So um, it's three differential equations, dx dt, dy dt, dz dt, three parameters a, b, and c. And we choose parameter values. We can solve these equations on a computer and we get an x solution and a y solution and a z solution. So again, we see there's some sort of time regularity to their wiggles, but um, the amplitude of the wiggles um, varies seemingly at random. And I'm particularly fond of the z trajectory. This, this is just an aesthetic observation. Um, this seems particularly I mean, these are all chaotic, they're all aperiodic, but I don't know, somehow this just looks more chaotic than everything else. If you had a, a function that was behaving this way, it, 
at least I wouldn't at first guess, oh, it must be following a simple rule. Anyway, as with the Lorenz equations, we can plot x versus y versus t, plot these in a three-dimensional phase space. And if we do that, we see another uh, strange attractor known as the Ressler attractor. So here, this is a higher resolution image. Um, here's the, the source for this. It's from, uh, from Wikipedia. And um, orbits move around. Sometimes they go up high, but they're sort of always cycling around in this direction, but sometimes they get pulled up and down. And then I showed with a number of different diagrams that what this is doing, this uh, solutions move along here, the lines move along here, they're stretched up in this direction, and then they, they're folded back down across. So this is stretching and folding, stretching and folding, stretching and folding. And I argued that this stretching and folding is at the core of chaos. So stretching and folding, I said, is the key geometric ingredient or ingredients of chaos. The stretching pulls nearby orbits apart. And that's where sensitive dependence on initial conditions come from. If all the orbits are being pulled apart, then small differences grow very rapidly. But we also need some sort of a fold. Otherwise, orbits would just get pulled apart forever and go off to infinity. So we need some sort of a stretch and then a fold. Stretch and then a fold, like one does when kneading dough. So the stretching and folding that one can see, I, I hope, in these three-dimensional strange attractors, particularly the Rustler attractor, this stretching and folding occurs in one-dimensional maps as well. So the logistic equation, anything that's shaped like the logistic equation, is performing a stretch and a fold. And this explains, maybe not fully explains, but provides some uh, indication for how one-dimensional maps can capture some features of higher-dimensional systems. They all involve stretching and folding. So lastly, because it's an important and I hope interesting and fun idea, I just want to underscore strange attractors again. So first of all, just to point out that they're complex structures. These are interesting uh, shapes. They're usually fractals, and they arise from very simple dynamical systems. The motion on the attractor itself is chaotic, but all orbits get pulled into the attractor. So they combine elements of order and disorder. If I start the Lorenz equations anywhere, I can't predict what the exact orbit will be, but I know it's going to trace out that same strange attractor shape. So it's predictable in that I know what the overall shape will be, but I don't know exactly how it will traverse that shape. So it combines order and disorder, predictability and unpredictability. Another way to say that is that motion on the attractor is locally unstable. Locally unstable because nearby orbits get pushed apart. It's globally stable because um, no matter what happens, the, the orbit is going to trace out that strange attractor in the same way. I want to underscore this final point because I think it's important. It's one of the most important realizations that emerges from the study of dynamical systems. And that is that strange attractors, systems with strange attractors, combine order and disorder, predictability and unpredictability in the following way. As we've seen, motion on an attractor is chaotic. That means it has sensitive dependence on initial conditions, the butterfly effect. It's so impossibly sensitive on those initial conditions that it behaves as if it were random, or maybe depending on your point of view, it actually is random. But the point is, it's not something that can be predicted. However, I do know, even if I don't know the exact trajectory that a, a curve will take through phase space, I know that it's going to trace out that strange attractor. It has to lie in that attractor, um, and it will sort of trace it out in similar ways. And what that means is, is that certain average or statistical properties of that orbit are entirely predictable. I could state with a high degree of certainty what fraction of the time, say, the um, trajectory will have a positive x value or a negative x value, or how often it will reach a z value above a certain, uh, a, a certain height. So this global stability gives it a different type of predictability, a statistical predictability. We can make 
very confident statements about average properties, but we can't make statements about the particular trajectory followed by a particular uh, initial condition. So uh, an analogy might help shed some light on this, and it may even not be an exact, uh, it may be stronger than an analogy, but the, the analogy is that um, the strange attractor, the fact that there's some stable statistical or global properties is sort of like the climate, things that don't change over time or change very little over time. The um, exact orbit, which is unpredictable, could be like the weather. So we say the weather is unpredictable, but the climate is predictable. There are well-defined, stable, average properties of the climate. Again, they change very slowly compared to, you know, they, they might change on the under typical times, under the scales of what, hundreds or thousands of years, at least. So um, we can have unpredictable short-term behavior with statistically predictable long-term behavior. Right, so sometimes people in these silly climate debates, the climate deniers will say, how can you predict the climate when you can't even predict the weather? Well, there's the, the point of strange attractors, a phenomenon of strange attractors says, there's no logical inconsistency at all between long-term uh, structural or statistical stability and predictability and short-term or uh, local instability or unpredictability. So strange attractors um, combine Predictability and unpredictability, order and disorder from the same system, the same set of equations in really interesting and important ways. Now, of course, the climate is, I think, much more than a three, uh, an attractor in three-dimensional space, but this gives the right idea. And the main point, um, I'm not saying that the climate is a strange attractor, but the main point is that there's no logical inconsistency at all. In fact, it's a very normal state of affairs to have systems that are locally unpredictable, but globally and uh, predictable in, uh, in a statistical or structural sense. Okay, so this brings us to the end of Unit 8, which was about strange attractors. They're fun, interesting mathematical objects. I think they make beautiful shapes, and I think they tell us how order and disorder are related and can be combined in some interesting and important ways. What the exact applications are in different areas of science will probably vary depending on those areas, but I think it's an important result. So the next unit, Unit 9, will take a look at pattern formation. This unit will be a little bit different in character, it'll be less mathematical, and more just showing you results from a few mathematical models. And we'll see that simple dynamical systems can produce strange attractors, they can produce disordered or apparently disordered behavior, the butterfly effect, but they also can produce uh, strikingly complex patterns as well. So we'll see you next week.